Celebrate what Jesus is doing throughout the nation and rise up to answer His call on your life. To serve the poor, heal the broken, free the captives, and bring joy to those in need. Find hope, encouragement, and motivation through Overcomers TV. This inspiring network features everyday people and ministries across America who are putting God's love in action. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another interview on Overcomers TV Live. I'm Pastor Chuck. I have the honor and privilege to introduce to you some of our ministry partners and friends. Our next guest, Virginia Prodan. She wrote a book, Saving My Assassin. I know uh, she's a, an attorney and uh, an advocate of sorts for human rights. Um, we've met a few times at NRB. Virginia, thank you so much for jumping on with us here today. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you so much for your God-given skills to do such an amazing work that you are doing. Well, give God all the glory, right? We all have a part to play. And I sometimes think we're God's little PR department, just shining the spotlight on some of his people that he's raised up for such a time as this, who've stepped out of the boat. They've all said, here I am, Lord, send me. And there they're out doing it. So we're trying to show the rest of the world, including the body of Christ, this is what it looks like to be a doer of the word, a doer of the work. And so you're a mover and a shaker. You're all over the place. Um, I'd love for you to tell our viewers just a little bit about your journey, how you know the Lord became real to you, and, and again, how that even led to a life of ministry and, and even eventually writing this book. Oh, thank you so very much. I will try in the time that uh, I will try to point a few things about that, but read more in my memoir, Saving My Assassin. Yeah. They yeah. can uh, find the website, um, the book on my website, on the books .com. Um I grew up in uh, communist Romania. Uh, and for a very young, I noticed my parents, and people around me, they fearful uh, of the government uh, who will them to give up their rights. Uh, and they will do it out home, being fearful that they might be jailed or, or be put in prison for not doing that. But I also watch them inside of my whispering how horrible the government is. Uh, was and the fact that they expect the government to ask even more um, wow. from the top. So you can imagine at six years wow. old, I felt insecure. I realized my parents were not protecting happens or right. I didn't count for the government. At the same time, I noticed a fire that sits in me, a passion to find truth and speak up for the truth. So yeah. I would love for your audience to pose a little bit and think about where and how many times during the day they find something, say, oh, that's not good, it needs to be changed. Be attention because that yeah. might be, you know, it, my desire to find a truth became my mission as I was late in life. We all have a mission. Like right. we said in Calling. the yeah. incident you are doing with your Kamer TV and podcast, and I have a mission and everybody has a mission. So that became mm -hmm. my Good. mission to find the yeah. truth and uh, the truth. So yeah. I had in my family years, so I I notice that people will come and ask questions, and they had answered those lawyers, but ready yeah. to speak up. So in my mind, I thought, "Oh, I found the way I'm gonna yeah. go to law school. I'm gonna find the gonna speak up for the truth." So that was God's way to go to to find the truth. So right. I graduated from. Um, I want to post. Just a little bit here, and I want to tell uh, your uh, 
audience, your viewers, when they yeah. read my memoir, Assassin, they will find the way you admitted to law school in a socialist country, in America, uh, and government requires you. I will give you uh, the uh, the uh, At that time, when I, as a young person, I didn't no, um, this uh, was good for me not, not to know. The government before allowed and everyone who applied to, to take the exam, the government will look into your file. That in socialists, from the time that you were born, the time that you died, in between those, the government yeah. had a file and kept track of every without yeah. you being able to those and to say hold on right. just one second it's a mistake right. i can right. but those were the three questions three questions that the government one if my parents organize a report against um, uh, the socialist thing the second one if their children ever reported to the government that they said something in their home and the third one was if my were Christians. Right. So I passed wow. the, the test. So I I took the test and was admitted. And for four years, I went to law school. And I learned very well because I believe with all my heart that in those books, I'm going to. Yeah. Well, Jesus defines himself in John 14, 6, right? Right the night before the crucifixion. He's like, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, right? And then he says, no one comes to yes. the Father except through me. Show us the Father. You've seen me. You've seen the Father. I love John 14. But God is all about truth. And God's not exactly. like a man. He cannot lie. So it's interesting. You picked up on this hunger and thirst for truth and even a desire to be an advocate. And that's what Jesus is. He's our advocate. He's like our lawyer, right? Yeah. Um, uh, before the judge, God, the judge. And he's like, not guilty because I paid the penalty. Right. He paid for it. So he's like our advocate. So these are all God given qualities that you sense that an early age. That's amazing. Absolutely. So um, I graduated from law school. I practiced uh, maybe a year or less. And I was still mm -hmm. looking for the truth. Hey, a former client came um, back to law, my law office because he had some new new situations, and I had been working with him. And I remember him and looking at him. He was joyful in a joyless, hopeful in a hopeless land. Many times I thought that he was crazy that I knew, but I never had the time. <laughs> but that day when he came, I was so disappointed. I was almost at the where I wanted to give up my profession because I was thinking, I'm looking, I can't find the truth. And as I look at him, I heard myself saying, I wish I had in my life or in your life. He said, do you go to church? I stared at him thinking, I knew crazy. I don't know why I asked you, but he wrote something on a piece of paper and gave it to me. This is an address to our church. Would you come Sunday to church? Myself saying, yes, I was that desperate to find mm -hmm. And the next Sunday, right. I was at his church and I heard the family what you said, John 46. Jesus wow. Christ said, the truth, the way, and the life nobody comes to the father except through me hey i accepted christ as my lord and savior and i stood that i was looking in the wrong place that christ <laughs> is the truth and not on not accepted him as my lord and savior but i understand and he has an appointment on my life to christian right. and human rights case not only in Romania here, because now yeah. I am a 
associated with um, an alliance defender freedom. In other words, I was a troublemaker in Romania. I'm a troublemaker here. <laughs> so you just switched te- you switch teams. Now it's yes. for justice and mercy and yeah, the oppressed. Um, and God has a heart for all of that, right? Um, yeah, that's yes. amazing. Yeah. So um, along with your practice, you got to tell a little bit about the story about how uh, with about the book, the memoir, Saving My Assassin. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yes, I. Yeah, I started to defend Christians' rights cases, and I have. To to tell you, God never gave me rent. God gave, yeah. gave me one step at a time, intimidating. Amen. And if you think, oh, but I don't have what you have, and I didn't have anything when I started. I had Christ, and that was in every single step. Right. He showed me the way. He put people around. Um, I was at that time 20 years old, very young. Uh, I, uh, um, I, I was under five feet tall. I'm still under five feet tall. Eighty-two pounds. And nothing. Nobody. Government. Maybe the government said, "Oh, he's gonna disappear. He's gonna just. He's make, She's making some noise. She's gonna disappear." But not, not with God. Not with God. Right. When God gives you a mission, He equips you. He opens door for you. He does absolutely. But not only that, you will have heart because the ungodly culture will go against you. There's going to be opposition, no doubt. It's it's just because you're doing something for God doesn't mean all the all the seas are going to part and all the doors are going to open. There's going to be some opposition, and He uses that. It's part of the struggle. It's part of the growth, and we walk by faith, not by sight. Right? That is yeah. so true. That is true. So, so I found not only my clients being uh, interrogated uh, in uh, in jail thing to defend them but on myself uh, being the target of the government they will follow me they will kidnap arrest me beat me torture me even place me on the house arrest um, but in the time God did amazing things unknown to me time I knew yeah. Every day was in front of me. That was it. I was interrogated. I was beaten and tortured. I um, had also success with, with my class. Many of them, they were released from prison because I, I presented a law that protected them. But unknown to me at that time, many of my became part of the United States. Nation reports on human rights and part of United States reports on human rights. In other words, the whole world started to know about my work, unknown to me. No, I have to know what God is doing. Oh, radio and television, like Voice of America, Free Europe, Christian um, magazine were publishing many, many articles about me. Again, unknown to me so it's working always and we do not have to to know every just have to trust yeah. him Amen. and be doers of his work like you said mm-hmm. not just reading the bible not just believing yeah. but right. and being his life in yeah. well the guy was not very happy with me when all these <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but yeah, it's just, uh, I bet, I bet, you know, it's like, yeah, that's interesting. Just a quick note, you talked about step by step, and that's one of my favorite verses, a man's or woman's heart plans their way, the Lord directs your steps, and he doesn't show you the blueprint because it's always based on your obedience, whether you take that next step or not. You can quit at any given time, and it doesn't come to pass with you in it. He may bring some other people to get it done, but um. Yeah, that's just a really important uh, point for anybody listening. Whatever God puts in front of you, you just need to be faithful for your next step. That's good. Yes, exactly. Congressman and Senator, Congressman Frank and Christopher Sweet will come to room and talk with me. And that was a, a visible way to show me I, I am with you. So uh, it was something for the government 
treatment to that uh, Elkan people and many others know about me. So they couldn't kill me. And people and Christians that were in jail before I uh, uh, Christians, many of them, before I took many of them disappeared or were killed and so forth because it was for the government. Nobody knew about them. But God used a man. I'm sharing this with you, and you can read more in my memoir, Assassin. Uh, I hope it will encourage you because, and I hope my um, uh, talk with you is, and my yeah. life is just an example of what God in one life, life that life Amen. can be you, yours. Amen. So, and, you know, while we're talking, um, I'd love to show our viewers a little bit of your website. It's your name, virginiaprodonbooks.com. And uh, you also do some coaching and stuff, right? So yes, you do yes. a lot. Um, yes. I but, yeah, did you? Do, I do training. I help people to be prepared for execution. I uh help young people in college and university how to keep their, their, their faith in, uh, in school because I have three kids and uh, came to the United States. I didn't know a word in English. My kids know English. They learn English and my first daughter graduated and new like me. My second daughter from Harvard Law School and my son United States Air Force Academy. So with God, you can do amazing things, and you can you can go to all those schools, and you can graduate and still be a Christian. So I train students how to keep their their faith in school, and how to respond to your professors or to other students in a nice and polite way. How to ask question it's absolutely amazing to see those um, those people that are in fire being trained to go back to maybe like a ceo to uh, um, his own uh, business or the business that uh, he is the ceo or those those students and just to share and, and to be leaders and strong and core leaders so we do all of us, and we are grateful, grateful for. Is a picture of me at the academy. I spoke at Air Force Academy, and I speak in many, wow. many, many, all over the world, not only in America, yeah. but all over the world. And yeah. I want to say, it, um, at the time that you go through, and you think that your suffering is for you, you that nobody knows. No, don't believe the evil one. God will you your uh, misery uh, your pain and suffering as a ministry to others uh, for, for people all yeah. over the world when i was in romania I had no idea that one day i will be with charles here to encourage you but god is in is in his sovereignty that one day mm -hmm. he's going to use those that book those Pain and suffering, he was thinking of yeah. you. He meant yeah. that how much he loved you. He said, I'm gonna let Virginia go through all this suffering because one you will go to, and I want you to see the finished product and how I use yeah. Virginia, how I equip her, and how I use years and years. And for people all over the world, believe the lies of the evil one say nobody knows about you you are because you are not alone god yeah. will use you and your strength and your right. pain and suffering and with god that poverty will become your ministry yeah i've heard your misery becomes your ministry and uh now you have a ministry and like i said you're speaking that gives hope to those that are hopeless and you're not everything to everybody but you're something to someone and your story I always say your story, your testimony, it preaches without being preachy. There's like a line that's crossed where people don't want to be preached to unless 
you know, they're hungry and they're searching and they want to learn and they're, and they're looking for good preachers. But the world doesn't necessarily want a sermon, but they want to see God's demonstration in your life. And you're just letting them see what he's done for me. He can do for you. Right. That is so correct. And you touched something so powerful. Thank you so very much for saying that. Because you reminded me to tell people and to see and be encouraged. Fought against a powerful dictator. So they had everything at his fingertips. The Tate, an army, uh, money, he even the whole world before I, I uh, explain. But in God's end, the dictator had a temporary power. So don't look at the culture, what's going on in America or wherever you might be living. The evil one has a temporary power. God's yes. hands and the evil one is in God's hands too. One, as Psalm 9 said, you will be able to see the, the wicked. You will be able to see that and you will be able to see what, how powerful your God is that he protects and you have a mission now. Don't consider one too powerful. Look yeah. at your, your God. First John your 4, eyes. 4. Yes. Yeah. First yes. John 4, 4 says, greater is he who is in you, yes. than he, and that includes the devil or anybody else for that matter, who is in the world. So uh, greater yes. is he who's in you. That's if you receive the Holy Spirit, receive Jesus, you receive God into your life. He's in you. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's an amazing biblical. I know it's kind of theology, but at the end of the day, they always say God's knocking on your heart and you got to let him in. He doesn't bully his way in he, he you know you have to invite him in and then that's when the work really begins and that's when the adventure really starts is when he's inside with you going through all this stuff absolutely yeah. absolutely i i well i want to give you you find in a lot of example but let me give you an example as i was in an interrogation room uh they would I would be full of blood but they would uh, hit my uh, my head at the table, my uh, my back to the walls, and I remember uh, in in horrible situation with blood and everything. And I remember saying, "I don't like what you, but God loves you, and I choose to love you." And all the powerful, uh, um, uh, per cruel persecutor wanted to do everything for the dictator to go up in the hierarchy they had to turn their heads because they they didn't know what to do with me only in heaven we'll see who yeah. among them accepted Christ because they will see the power in me in a under 582 pounds <laughs> surrounded by six or ten Wow, that's the power of God. And yes, and with guns, everything. Don't be afraid. Wow. Don't be afraid. The best be is Amen. in God's will. Amen. That's awesome. Well, I would love you know for you to be able to pray for our viewers. Uh, we have another guest uh, coming up shortly here. And uh, before we do, is there anything else the Lord put in your heart to share with us today? Uh, one of the things that I want to share is when the government sent a client to my office, the reason why the book is called My Assassin, uh, my new client was Securitate officer who came into my office, pulled his say, I'm not your client, I'm here to kill you. I was fearful as you can imagine. But I heard the Lord saying, gospel wow. with him. And I shared the gospel, and at the end, he asked. And wow. Wow. you, not only that, on he came to my dad's office because he watched me speaking in differences and find out where I live. 
and he asked me to let him a chapter in my memoir. So now wow. you can read his chapter God has done in his life. If wow. you let God wow. in his glory, your life will never be the same. And even the life of enemies will never be the same. Trust him. That's yeah. that one to say to everyone. Yeah, that's a great message. That's awesome. Well, I'm going to ask you to lead us in prayer. I'll close. I'm a ladies first guy. So if you could lead, I'd love to pray with you. Our oh, we come before you to honor and glorify you. You are an amazing, you change our lives and you use us for your glory, lives around us. I pray for the ones that are listening, give their heart to you, their Lord and Savior. I pray for our fearful that will be strong and courageous, that my soul encourage them to trust, to make them pants, that you will change lives and the lives of people will give you glory and help us. And Charles said, be of your word, that mm. kingdom will be extended and will be changed forever. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. And I too thank you, Lord, for time with Virginia and hear her story, her testimony. Thank you for her boldness and also her meekness and gentleness and her desire to know the truth and to be an advocate and to help those who need help. Thank you for sending the helper, the counselor, the comforter. You're all that. And uh, anybody who hasn't looked up and received you as their Lord and Savior, I pray, God, that you would um, just knock on their heart again. Just we know you want them saved even more than we do. And I thank you for our testimonies and the platforms to share it, whether it's in book form or interview. We look forward to the NRB, the National Religious Broadcasters Convention coming up in May. Again, opportunities to mix and mingle uh, with those in Christian film, radio and television to help get our messages out that somebody might hear something because we know faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So thank you for our partnership in the gospel and direct our steps and show us what's next for us as we advance your kingdom for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. That's amen. awesome. Well, there it is. Uh, her phone number, 972-799-9702, virginiaprodonbooks.com. And uh, and Overcomers TV Live, there's our number as well. But uh, you're amazing. Can't wait to spend some more time with you in Orlando this year. I'm sure you're going to be at the NRB convention, right, in May in Orlando? Yes. And Charles, Good let me tell you, tell you this. I have a podcast. If you want to uh, promote your, uh, your uh, Overcome or sure. uh, any podcast, let me know. I'll be more than happy. Uh, two days I'm going to interview Steve Green for the second time, you know. I, nice. uh, yes, that's, and I had cool. Dr. Ben Carson, and many others. Yeah. So Very I'll cool. be I'll be happy to do. I'll email you and, uh, and yeah. let you know. And you you choose uh, the time and uh, we work together. Thank you so Amen. much again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the Lord. All right. You too. You too. Uh, do you want to do a fist bump or is that yes, just for the yes. guys? I like the fist bump. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't, please don't forget to send me your, your link um, yep. in such a way that I can yep. I can promote it on my podcast and yep. any uh, any tags that need so um, people yep. will know. Yep. About I'll that. email you the Dropbox link to download the file like last time and also our YouTube link for this one on our channel. Sounds great. Sounds so much. Good stuff. All Bye -bye. Right. Good How would you like to partner with Overcomers TV? Become a ministry partner, spreading the good news about your ministry and Jesus Christ. We're selecting ministries for upcoming episodes of Answering the Call. We can also help you produce your own show. Partnering with us is easier than you think. Just visit our website, overcomerstv.live. Be an Overcomer today with Overcomers TV.